Classic old radio night. <laughs> Are you already recording? Well, I already got mine started, but uh, I'm, I can cut it off or re, you know edit it or whatever. Yeah, ten four. Can you hear me over there? Oh yeah, I can hear you. automatic dummy terminator yeah be sure not to turn it on or you won't be able to hear crazy man Sorry, I had to pick on somebody. Oh, I said, oh, I just cut it off. Who was that? Just kidding. <laughs> yeah, I just turned it on. <laughs> Where'd you go, crazy man? <laughs> well, I think we all need one of those on our radio. Come on. Roger, Roger. <laughs> It's radio because it's not mounted to everything, and I'm using the hand mic. Every time I pick up the mic and talk, the radio starts to spin this way and that way, which will make it maybe a little irritating for the video. i got to be careful. <laughs> the radio's sliding around on top of the power supply. Hey, uh, <laughs> 21... I'm talking on this DNA Raider that uh, that uh, uh, Roadrunner, the other Roadrunner, brought me. And I mean, you should have, I wish I'd have taken a picture of it. It was pitiful. You want to talk about a rust bucket? He already took it to one person and they said it weren't, wasn't worth fixing. And they're probably right, but being I'm nostalgic about it, I went ahead and restored it. And so I got it uh, repainted. And I, had to, I mean, I just, it was, that thing was so filthy, it was black. You should have seen the rag when I got done. The rag was black and had so much water in it. When I first turned it on and then heated up, the the meter was full of water and condensation. You couldn't even see the inside of the meter. I had to pull the plastic cover off and wipe off all the water that came out of it in the form of steam. Put on there a little bit of uh, uh, varnish remover. What is 
I don't know. What are you trying to do? Well, when the meter's kind of halfway stuck, you know, it doesn't want to move much. I was looking on the YouTube and Mike's radio repair was showing something on there, but I don't remember what it is. I, I know it's not WD-40. I don't know. I got to check on Andy. I'll be right back. Well, if you're talking about an RF signal meter, sometimes you can go in there and there's like little screws on the bottom. And if you're very careful and just barely turn them, you can loosen those a little bit sometimes and that'll help. But you got to be real careful or it'll fall out because it's like balance between those screws. Yep, I'm talking on, uh, I think it's a 1976, probably, I had looked at the date stamp on the back, but this is probably a 1976 radio, maybe 1975. It's a Craco KCB Deluxe. Brand new in the box, new old stock, 23 channel. It's not even phase lock loop. It used something called crystal synthesis. Uh, phase lock loop was just coming out, or maybe hadn't even come out yet when this radio came around. Yeah, you look at the modern radios, they got maybe one, two, or three crystals in them. Uh, this one has uh, 12 crystals in it. I got you. That's pretty cool, man. They had that kind of technology back then, though, yeah. Yeah, they got 23 channels by taking 12, or in some cases, 14 crystals and mixing them together in different orders and different uh, ways to get the 23 channels. Some radios had 14 crystals, some radios had 12, and then they came along with phase lock loop, and first they had three crystals, then they had two, and then eventually they got it down to just one. That's uh, pretty nice. I remember I had an old hand here one time. You change them crystals around and then change the channel with it, would you? Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, some of them were like that, too. Now, the brownies and all that, they had like 23 crystals. Uh, the Tram uh, D201 and the Browning uh, Mark Gold, uh, Golden Eagle Mark II, those had like 23 transmit crystals, I think it was, and then a tunable receive. So, yeah, they, you, at one point you had a ton of crystals in there. Yeah, I can't afford to it out. But this one's got 12. This was very, uh, the 12 and the 14 crystal schemes were the most, uh, the ones you saw most of the time. This has what uh, the 14 megahertz 23 megahertz and i think there are 12 megahertz crystals i think is what's in this one that's pretty neat that's a, that's a base radio it's not a mobile radio oh no it's a mobile and it's completely stock and i'm talking on the little stock hand mic that came with it got it on a little 12 volt radio shack uh power supply oh well, it sounds clean man sounds a lot clearer than me and your radio i think Oh yeah, well this, this was made by, Cybernet actually made it, they put Craco's name on it, but Cybernet's actually who made this. They were good radios. Yeah, like I said, man, it's good and clear. It sounds real good. It's nice looking too. It's not, It's nothing fancy, but it's a nice looking little radio. And it's got like a walnut uh, veneer, you know, cover on it. It looks like a wood grain cover on it. Yeah, that's nice, man. Old vintage. You can't hardly beat them, man. Yeah, well, if you check on YouTube, if you got my YouTube channel, or uh, um, if you look at 21, I sent him a picture of it. You'll see a picture of it. It's pretty. Yeah. You used to see these Krakos in the, uh, the store called Eckerd's and Revco. Uh, they used to show up in Kmart. Used to have them. Uh, some of the other stores as well. That's where I used to see them. Revco, which isn't around anymore. Eckerd's, which isn't around anymore. And uh, Kmart's, where I remember seeing the Krakos. I heard you talking about the other day, and I thought, man, I've never heard of a CB that had a TV on one side and a CB on the other, so I was actually interested. I never, I, that was going to be a new one on me. Yeah, I really thought it was new. When I looked at it that day, uh, it had some sort of jack on there. I guess it's for like an input. I'm not real sure. But it doesn't look like a regular headphone jack. It's kind of weird looking to it. That's what I thought it was. It might have been a mic jack, you know, but uh, no, it ended up being just a, a radio, you know, AM, FM radio, and then a little, little small TV, little four-inch screen, black and white TV. 
Yeah, it probably has 13 channels in it, too, doesn't it? I didn't even plug it up, man. I took it, I, I brought it out to uh, shed and looked at it, and it wasn't what I was looking for, so I put it back in the box and then shoved it right back in there, Timbo. Yeah, well, those old TVs back then, that's what they had. I think they only went up. They had started at channel 2. There was no channel 1 on the dial. And then they went from like 2 to 13, I think it was. But it's been a long time since I looked at one of those. <laughs> hey, that's still cool. It's still cool, little piece, man. I don't know what year it was. I, I need to get it back out of there and uh, check it all out. It's still got the, uh, the model and everything on there. You know, the plate that's on the back of it. Just to see what it was manufactured. Got to get a little history on it. But I'm sure it's back in the 70s. Yep, see, we only had, uh, we had like three TV channels, maybe four when I was growing up. That was it, because we weren't on cable or anything. You had ABC, NBC, CBS, and I think that was like the EVE TV channel or something like that. South Carolina TV. The red light. Yeah, go ahead. Back when me and Crazy Man was coming up, well, we didn't have no regular TV. Well, we found a TV bowl busted up laying up on the side of the road and take the inside out. And let the people sit around in front. We'd get in behind and make all kind of funny faces and stuff that come on. <laughs> yeah, I hear you know. When I come up, I didn't know what a TV was. Hey, uh, yeah, I'm sure you did this 21. You see those old junk TVs on the side of the road or somewhere, and you'd like go grab the sweep tube out of it. I used to do that. There was this uh, some TV repair shop or electronic shop that used to dump them out in the woods. I never I never knew who it was, but there was a dead end road went out in the woods, and that was somebody's place to dump old TVs. And I didn't I didn't know who was doing it, but I just knew I, every time I went back there, there were more big console TVs back there. Man, I'd raid that thing. I'd cut the transformer out of it, get the speakers out of it, and get all the tubes. I got six KD sixes and uh, six JG six A's, all kind of nice tubes out of it, and transformers, all kind of parts. So it was a gold mine for me. Whoever was shouldn't have been doing it, but I wasn't complaining. Yeah, it'd have been my luck. I'd have been back there whacking away, cutting it off and stuff, and turn around and look, and there'd be a cop standing right there <laughs> say, hey, what you doing throwing all this stuff out here? Yeah, well, it'd have been obvious I didn't put it there because it'd probably take a pickup truck to put it back there, and I was in like a little Dodge Dart. You weren't going to put those in a Dodge Dart. <laughs> so it'd have been obvious I didn't put it there, but, I, you know, uh, yeah, if I'd have pulled up in a pickup truck or something, I guess I couldn't have argued my way out of it. But he'd have looked at that Dodge Dart and say, there ain't no way that thing fit in there. All right, fellas, I'm going to get out of here, man. Get on the base. I'll be back there in just a short. 410. All right, short, sir. Ten, nine, eight, seven, five, four, three, two, one. Boy, you can smell this DNA Raider heating up. I didn't put a fan in this one. Yeah. I'm pretty sure if mine don't get hot over there. I'll crank up that little fan I got over there. Yeah, go ahead. Hello? Alright. How how does he have his antenna up down there on John's Island? No, he keeps switching the damn radios. He have a good radio over there. When he gets in and he find out he gets out real good, he switch. Wait a few minutes, he switch it back. He did like some of them mud dummies out there. Hey nine eight seven, how high up you got that antenna down there? I don't guess he's hearing me. I can hear him around Somerville on the mobile, but over here at the house, I can hear him. Unless I got real bad static, I can hear him, but he's not real strong. I can't hear him at all. Let's see here. Let me tune this old... I tell you what, this thing with this old DNA Raider was definitely headed for the bit bucket. If a uh, tw- if a uh, Roadrunner hadn't brought it to me, that's where it had gone because it was dirty and ugly and <laughs> it was pitiful. It was definitely an act of love to bring this thing back. Ten four, crazy man, are you watching Channel Two? Uh, you know uh, what is it, Channel Two? I don't know what's what it is. I think your cartoon shows on there. And what about those cartoon must have been watching? What the heck is going on in front of me? TV that blonde with a black thing, a shirt on or some kind of 
Two swing and a three. Signal's about the same on me. Okay, you still hearing me over there? Oh yeah, I got you good. How about you, there, Red Light? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I got you in there good, man. Now I'm pointing at everybody. Then y'all must live over there on Johns Island. Crazy man, did you move over on Johns Island? You don't let the answer that, do you? Uh -huh. So I guess he's history. He's what? He's out of there. I thought he was 987.
It just goes to show you. It's always something. talking on a I'm not sure if it's 1975 or 1976 is one of the two completely stock Craco CB deluxe 23 channel crystal synthesis radio it's got a volume squelch a and L uh, on off and a delta tune and I uh, got an old Radio Shack power supply with an old restored gray DNA Raider and uh, this is definitely old school stuff Yeah, it's pretty to be on that old radio. This was new in the box. I got off a new old stock I got off eBay a few years ago. It's pretty. Oh, it came with two mounting brackets. It came with the original black one, but it also came with one of those slide mounts. You know, they had the little key so you could slide it in and out of your car, being everybody was uh, stealing the radios back in there. It was like, back then, that was like stealing iPods out of radios now. They were breaking in people's cars trying to get their hands on a CB radio in 1975 and 1976. Galaxy export radio uh, mobile and uh, it's real heavy. 
heavy, though, because it's got a power supply built in it. You know, back then they had those big old transformers and all like that. So uh, it's real pretty. I just, I already had one, but the one, the first one I got uh, was, was, it's a little scratch, not real scratchy, but the one I'm, uh, I got now uh, coming, it's, it's like really, really uh, nice. So that's the one I'll probably use there. All right, well, um, let me look, get back and let Joe uh, go at it there. I'm standing by. Well, I think you got a good radio over there. I used to have a 25.7 Gauss radio. Yeah, it's 2517. Uh, but, yeah, it's a good, strong, clean-sounding radio. I enjoy talking on it. Um, A21, I'm kind of interested. You said that thing is mobile and bass as well. How does that, how does that work? Do you have some sort of... Um, relay switch or some, something like that, the way you can run it, um, how does that work exactly? Well, what it is, it's got two plugs in the back. One of them you, uh, plug in for, uh, 110 or whatever, you know, wall power, and the other one is for the mobile air, and you plug it in. It's one right over the top of the other one, and, uh, that's, that's the way it does it there. Oh, man, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool, man. You don't see that. Any, I hadn't seen no radios like that. Not, not in my 20-something years of messing with them there, Roger. Yeah, Roger, Roger. Well, they used to have a, uh, several, like Sears had, had one, and uh, that was like a base and a mobile combination. That was a bigger bigger thing. It was a big old mobile. It wasn't real, you know, like a base station. It was a, it was an oversized mobile. I don't remember how it how it did its thing, whether you switched it on the back or what, but this is kind of foolproof right here. Uh, you know, you have to un you have to plug in a different plug, and uh, so, um, you know, that's how they did it, and it, uh, it, it, it I, guess, I don't know why they didn't do them all like that, why they didn't make them, I guess, money-wise, I'm sure. I think Midland had one too. It was like a thirteen eight ninety seven or a thirteen eight ninety five, something like that. It's kind of a blue and black mobile that Midland had a sideband. I think it was twenty three channel that would do that. It had the little transformer built in, but it looked kind of like a mobile. Yeah, Roger. You know that um, that Sears uh, radio that I'd given you there. Is, is, how does it how does it do it? Is that a base and a mobile? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, you know, I, I'll i go look. I got it sitting here in the box. I'll go grab it and look. What's okay. in? So, is that a, transi a transistor type radio there, 21? Or does it have tubes inside that? No, it's transistor, all transistor there, Roger. Yeah, 410. Well, that's pretty cool, man, to have that kind of technology. Um, you know what year that thing was manufactured, roughly? Yeah, 1974. Yeah, that's nice, man. That's real nice. That Sears has got one of those oddball six-prong plugs on the back, like they had on the back of that realistic TRC-455, an oddball-looking six-prong plug. So you probably had two different cords, one for AC and one for DC. Everything's a slide control on the front of it. Uh, the channel selector is a, you know, a dial knob, but um, also, well, there's a push button. Uh, control it. You've got the volume turned up and somebody comes to blast it in there. You just reach up and push this button, distant or local, and it knocks it back halfway. And uh, it's got a big meter on it, like a Galaxy, uh, you know, 88 or 44, or one of those kind, not that little bitty one. It's got the four-pin mic, like the modern radios. One thing neat about it, it's got a speaker that's, that comes out the side of the radio. That's because when you... Uh, it's got four little rubber feet on the bottom, so when you set it on the, the table, you don't have to, you know, ex absolutely have to have an external speaker because it's a side-firing speaker. I thought there's a lot of those things that they, they that they did back then that was kind of ahead of their time. Like I say, it's all nice and shiny chrome, man. It's, uh, it, you know, they spent a lot of money because Courier had that Courier Classic base that was all chrome. Hey, 21. Yeah, come on. That Sears has got that oddball six-prong uh, plug on the back, like they got on the back of that realistic TRC-455 base. Great big oddball six-prong plug. Uh, I imagine they had one plug for AC and one plug for DC. You know, two different cables probably came with it, or maybe one was accessory, but it's that big oddball six-prong plug. Oh, okay, uh, okay. Tell 
Yeah, those TRC-455s have that. And people are bad about losing that that uh, cable. You see them on eBay, on eBay all the time. They don't have the power cord. You know, trying to sell the radio and have the power cord. It's that screwball plug on it, which means none of the standard plugs you can get now fit it. Yeah, that's that optical plug. <clears throat> well, it's kind of a rectangular shape, but it's uh, fatter than what you'd normally find. And it's got six holes in it. Craco Cybernet radios, they'd usually, well, you they come usually doing about four watts, but if you wanted to, you could crank them up to about five or six. I never do, but they, they would do at least five or six watts usually if you wanted to crank them up. But this one's doing four, and then I got it going into a 4 tube DNA Raider, and it's kicking about a 100 watt dead key. Now that's a PLL, oh, that's the Crystal one, or is that the P, what, what, what radio is that again? <laughs> it's the Craco CB Deluxe. KCB-2310, so there's no A or B. If it has an A at the end, that's the PLL012, uh, PLL01A, uh, and if it's got the B at the end, it's a PLL02A, but this one doesn't have an A or B, so this is the the crystal synthesis, and it's the 12 crystals, I think 23 megahertz, 14 megahertz, and 12 megahertz crystals. Oh, I got you. Is that one that you can take uh, and put another crystal <clears throat> in there, Yeah, and most of these radios, if you balance the channel selector between, not all of them, but most of them, if you balance the channel selector a lot of times between either the blank space in 22 or the blank space in 23, a lot of times you can get it to go to what they call then 22A, which later became uh, 24. A lot of them will do that. I don't know if this one will, but a lot of them would. Yeah, you can put extra crystals in it. Generally, you get four channels for every one crystal you put in. Four more channels. Uh, there's one crystal you can do to get the A channels. I think that'll give you like five channels. But the rest of the crystals, you put in the one extra crystal, you get four more channels. And then it skips every four and nine. So, like, you don't get uh, you don't get 24, 34, or 39. Uh, to get that one, you have to do a different crystal. But it's possible to get all four to you. just have to put a switch with a bunch of crystals in it. Unless you want to get that Siltronics Model 90 VFO, I think this one would take the number 6. The 90-6 is the one this one takes for the Siltronics VFOs. I think, and uh, a, a lot of the amateur 
armature operators got upset, was, you know, and uh, so they, I don't know, they know with a 200 or whatever, so they, they uh, fixed that to where that it was for 11 meter receive only, but it was easy to change it to transmit, so uh, they eventually, uh, you know, quit. Yeah. Well, Yezu did the same thing with the FT-101 uh, series. And the Tempo 2020 was kind of the same way. You could It had auxiliary position, so you could put channel uh, a crystal to get 27 megahertz in there, and then it was receive only. But then all you had to do was take a little piece of wire and make a jumper in there, and then it would transmit. So, yeah, but yeah, those 101s, those, you, some of those ones had that. Some of them had the auxiliary position, not all of them. But yeah, those 1011s, I never did like those Siltronics radios. They sounded like crap on AM. And, uh, you know, they sounded okay on sideband, but they drift around. Of course, Swan was known for drifting, especially the 350. They'd call that one the Swan 350 Drifty. It was so bad. Yeah, 10 4. Yeah. Well, they put out about uh, 100 watts or so on uh, sideband. But like you say, there's a couple of ways those guys would kind of help defeat that drifting around you know and of course it, it it's part of playing around with radios you know you gotta you know got like you're flying a uh, airplane or something you got all kind of knob switches and all and you're like the co you're the uh, pilot and you're sitting there you know and you get your lights turned out in the room or a little small uh like a crazy man likes to do uh get him a candle burning and a glass of wine and sit there and talk with the lights down in this uh radio room you know yeah, those Model 90s, though, they don't drift that bad. The ones I've, I've had two of them. Of course, I think the only one I ever used much was the the 90-3, but that one actually, wants, it's not that, uh, it's not like it's real unstable or anything. It's not bad. You guys have my wire over here at 21? No, it's just that you was getting your ambience, you know, uh, your, uh, you know what you call it, your romantic uh, mood going, you know, and uh, you'd get in there and kind of set the mood for your CB night. You'd have your candle and your light slow, Whip. you know, your dim lights and a little music playing in the background, That's and then you'd have your radio on there, Roger. I'll be back in a minute. My beagle's over here bumping into the radio and the stand and stuff. Let me get her out of here. I'll be back in a minute. Uh, so on top of the Lincoln back and forth. Is it winking at you or is it just winking? Winking or anybody comes in here. Okay. So 21, didn't Swan also make a make an amplifier too, right? Didn't Swan um, um, manufacture amplifiers as well? Oh yeah. They made Siltronics amplifiers too. They um, like the Sil Siltronics LA 550 or whatever it was. They made a they made a lot of uh, amplifiers and all, and uh, you know the uh, I, I, the Swan that I always liked the amplifier was the two piece one that uh, I get I can't never remember the name of the thing. It was a, it had two three five hundred Z's in it. Maybe Night Ranger can tell us what that model was. Yeah, I remember back in the early nineties. Um I don't know if y'all remember old Flower Town Mechanic from over in Knightsville. I, I got one from him, and it was a two-piece box like that. But like you said, I don't remember the, remember the model or anything like that. I just remember it being a Swan two-piece uh, box. But it was it was a good, strong box for sure. It was a Swan Mark One and a Mark Two. I don't know what was in the Mark One. Looking fan right in the very back. It's kind of hard to answer you when you won't be quiet. There's a smart. <laughs> it's a Swan Mark One and a Mark Two. I don't know what was in the Mark One. Um, I'd like to think that he 
Steve Wood because he's, he's one of the type of people that's, you know, borderline order, if you know what I mean. He kind of holds on to things, so maybe I need to research that and, and see if I can't get it from him if he still got it. Yeah, you can rebuild that. Where was she, where's she at? I mean, what town was she in? He's from right there in Knightsville, um, but he talked on the radio with, with uh, number two when he lived over in Knightsville and uh, Ice Cream Man and, you know, some of those guys from, from back then, like you said, Flower Town Mechanic and them. It was, uh, like you said, back in the early 90s, mid-90s. Yeah, I was on James Island over there then. We stayed on Channel 3. I knew Flower Town Mechanic pretty good there uh, where he used to work at and all like that, but he, uh, you know, he died. And um, he lived out off of Broom Hill Road at the last. You know, you turn down Old Orangeburg Road, and which I used to live on the opposite end. He lived at, no, wait a minute, that wasn't Old Orangeburg Road, that was Knightsville Road, whatever, anyway. And um, I lived down down the other end, down that way. But uh, you, you, on Broom Hill Road, you turn right there at that Sky, what was it, Skyway or some Skyland or some kind of big place. And, uh, and you turn the first street you come to on the right, and he was down there on the left. And I went by there, it must have been about 10, 15 years ago, and that place was all boarded up and looked like hell, man. Yeah, you're right. It's called Flower Town in the Village. And that old store, man, I remember that thing good. It's called Sky City. That was the name of the place was Sky City. But, uh, yeah, man, you're right. That's old Orangeburg Road right there, but it's Flower Town in the Village. Yeah, that's what it was, because I lived all the way down, I don't know if you know much about that area, Jedburg and all, but I lived, if you go on, keep it all going, before you had to make the turn to go out towards 78 to go to Hodges Grocery, um, uh, you know, Hodges Grocery was about the only thing in Jedburg back in the day, because I used to work for Herman uh, Muck and Foos, you know, and I helped build part of that little store there, and uh, Mr. Johnson, you know, and uh, it's, um, uh, shoot, the son, it was a game warden there. Uh, anyway, his mama worked there. For, he, she was some kind of kin. Of, might have been Johnson's daughter. I don't know. But anyway, uh, I lived down just before you got to the monkey house. You ever hear anybody talk about the monkey house? Yeah, the monkey house is, uh, used to be. Right where the Sphinx is now, it's on the corner of uh, Mallard Drive and Old Orangeburg. Yep, I'm real familiar with the monkey house for sure. Okay, well if you backed up, if you're coming by the monkey house, you made that turn off of uh, whatever that street is there, Mallard, whatever it is, I don't remember. But anyway, you turn right there and you get on Old Orangeburg Road, the monkey house is on the left. The first old house you come to sitting up on the hill, that was where I lived at right there on the right. Uh, on the right hand side there. I got you. Is that across from uh, where the Pinewood Preparatory School was? Where uh, Percy Knight? Percy Knight's got a house way up on that hill now. I don't know if that's the same same place there or not, but I'm thinking it is. No, it's way back, way back before that. Almost just as soon as you pass the Monkey House, if you don't, you know, you get going straight good. And uh, right there on the right, there used to be a big old cane patch right there. Big old gigantic uh, cane pole patch right there. And old man across the street, old black fella, he had a mule out there. He'd plow that, uh, uh, his land out there with an old mule. And uh, and then on up the road was an old wooden uh, a, a church up there. But uh, if you went on down past where we lived at, there's a, there was a dirt road right there on the right. The first dirt road come to and that goes all the way around goes back up in behind there and runs out to that back road that goes by that guy you told about Percy Knight back over there oh yeah I got you I know what you're talking about yep that's uh the columns that little dirt road they call it the columns now and it led back into Butternut actually called West Butternut but uh yeah that's what they renamed it um but yeah I know right what you're talking about I grew up right around the corner man by the old Sonnerville Speedway there off of Central um that's where I grew up at yeah, 10 four. Well, back in there, twin, there was some lakes back in there. We used to go back there and go fall gigging back up in there. And there's some lakes back there. And a friend of mine, uh, you know, when I went to high school with him, way in Charleston there, he moved up there. Old Eddie Harner was back up in there. He was crazy. Yeah, man. I've caught a bunch of fish out there in Twin Lakes. And 
back in off of Pike Drive, old Bob's Lake, you know, that old river that comes back in off of, uh, I don't know exactly what swamp that is. Um, I want to say four holes, but it's not four holes. It comes in off the Minus Bridge off of 78 before you get to 78, 178 there. Feeds in off of that, the Minus Bridge. Yeah, but yeah that's old Bob's Lake back in there, Tambo. Yeah, Roger. Um, what was the name of that bar or whatever on the corner of that street there, back going back in there? Uh, other than the store there, whatever, we used to go in there. Yeah, it used to be called BK's. Um, Bud Knight had that place. Um, the owns the septic tank service. He had it there for a while, and um, now the Chenners has got it. Um, I don't know if you know Bubba Chenners. And um, Bootsy Chenners was the, was the dad's name. Um, but they were they were big in the um, construction work, carpentry work. But um, yeah, they they end up taking it over. As a matter of fact, the Chenners now, but it used to be Bud Knight's place. Yeah, yeah, ten four on that there, yeah. Well, I hung around with those guys and all, and then um, the other ones that was down there across from uh, let's see on uh, Boone Hill Road or whatever, 17A, across from the uh, cemetery. There was a there was a garage there, and those guys used to the, the daddy and the uh, brother and all used to race cars at the Southwest Speedway. I can't remember I can't remember his name there, but it's across from uh, Somerville Cemetery over there on the opposite side over there. Yeah, ten four. That might have been a hair bit before my time, but yeah, it's kind of grown up by then. They had houses, and now they got that church built there now on the corner of that street. So yeah, a little bit before my time there, right? Yeah, Tim Fo, um, I'm trying to think of that guy that taught uh, automotive at Somerville there back in the, in the day there. Oh, shoot, man. I can't remember. I don't know why I would never remember. Anyway, all right, well, that's good. You all, you from around in there. Yeah, I used to I used to drive a tractor down to uh, Call Night Store, and uh, L.C. Knight was working in it then, and there used to be a, a lumber yard, a lumber mill, back behind that thing, behind his store, and I'd go down there with a, a John Deere Model M with a, tra a trailer on the back with uh, plywood sides on it, and I had to go and shovel in sawdust. He'd give us sawdust, and I had to shovel that damn thing full of sawdust, drive it all the way, all the way back, and put it out, and put it in the damn chicken pen. <laughs> yeah, I copy that. Yeah, I remember going to old Carl Knight's store, man. That was some of the best fried chicken you can get in the world right there at old, old Carl Knight's store. But, uh, yeah, that was back when the Cooper River Bridge was a dirt road there, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, old uh, L.C. Knight, man. He was a young guy, I guess, back then. And, uh, you know, I was, I was back in the day, man. I was a little sleepy little town back there. It ain't that way now. Oh, man, it's crazy. It's blown up, man. Like you said, Myers Mill, old Freddie Myers had that big farm there right across from the racetrack. We used to go over there and dove hunt those fields, man. He did, he had a big logging outfit and stuff. I don't know if you remember him or not, but uh, old Freddie Myers, he was something else. I don't know, it's been so long ago, you know, I moved from here and went to Georgia and then by the time I got back, it seemed like I, done, I got amnesia on some stuff there, but anyway. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm glad I talked to you about that. I, I'd, uh, I'm glad to think about that stuff again. Yeah, man, like you said, good little sleepy town back then, but it's changed a lot now, man. It's grown up and, I don't know, got a little bit of crime going on over there, if you know what I mean. Well, I guarantee you this is, this is the truth right now. I guarantee you if I tried to drive that same tractor and that little trailer down that damn old Orangeburg Road, I'd have been dead right now if I tried it today. Oh, yeah, they'll run you slam over and wouldn't they realize they did it? They, they texting and driving now, so they ain't much paying attention to the road there, right? Yeah, damn old. All right, well, um, let me stand by and let them get in there because I'm getting ready. I got almost 30 minutes on this video gate, so uh, somebody else get in there. I got about 50 minutes over here. Wow, 50, what a great day. <clears throat> Yeah, I had to boot the dog out. She was uh, bumping into the camera stand and whining, wanting out and stuff. I had to boot her out of here. Well, you put her in the yard? 
Well, she probably needed to go. I took her outside. She seems to be happy now and gave her a milk bone. But <laughs> yeah, she was in there whining. Here, the, if you look, watch the video gate at some point, you'll probably hear her whine and then see the camera start jumping around where she was over here bumping into the stand. No, I don't have any alcohol over here. It's got sparkling cider. I don't have any alcohol in the house. I don't buy it that often. Every now and again, I'll bring home a six pack, but most of the time, I don't even bring keep it in the house. A sparkling cider. It doesn't have any in it. It tastes like champ. Uh, uh, a crazy man calls it champagne. <laughs> kind of like an old dude, there. Yeah? All right, guys, I'm going to stop the video gate on my end. Classic radio, classic radio night. I started to say roundup, but this is classic radio night on December 23rd, 2016. Roger, roger. Me too. That's what I'm going to do as well. All right, there you go. Hey, I guess White Dog isn't getting out there. Anybody else? So, uh, a crazy man, a red light, and Night Ranger. Appreciate y'all getting in there, and I'm over. Uh, hey, put this thing and start uploading it, man. Until we do it again, I'm back out. Hey, that's what it was. Dirty, dirty, dirty topper. Hey, you go ahead and have that on there. And Night Ranger.